So we're in Altus, Oklahoma. This case is really different for us. Yeah. Have you ever worked on a case where you didn't have a body? No. Tracy Allen was a 27-year-old mother of two little girls. On the night of May 18, 2001, she was seen for the last time, and her whereabouts are still unknown. According to her estranged husband, Garland Bo Allen, Tracy abandoned her two young children for an unknown boyfriend and left her home of Altus, Oklahoma, never to be seen again. Garland said that she would rather be with her dope users, so she just left and left her kids. Garland Allen was the father of her two children. He beat the heck out of Tracy. He was an abusive relationship. At the time that she went missing, Tracy might have wanted out, but Garland did not. And it's complicated by the fact that she was so estranged from her own family that by the time they realized she'd been gone for so long, all of the clues and things that they could have looked at were already frozen, not just cold. Right. The question we have to answer is, did Tracy run away because of her ex-husband's abuse, or did her ex-husband kill her in one final act of domestic violence? We have to solve a case without a body, without a crime scene. It's not going to be any physical evidence. Apparently, we got our work cut out. It has been 16 years and still no answer. Please consider her killing a cold Years case. later, the case is still unsolved. There are so many cold cases out there just waiting to be solved. The crime scene ultimately tells the story of the murder. We want to bring justice to these victims. Good morning. Good morning. Bill Perkins. I'm Kelly. Nice to meet you. Rusty Wayne. Nice to meet you. It's been about five years since I started working the Tracy Allen case. When I sat down with Tracy's mother, Wanda, I could see the hurt in her eyes, and it affected me. And I told her that I couldn't promise her the outcome, but I promised I would not stop. How are you, Alan Brown? Rusty Williams. Rusty, nice to meet you. Bill Perkins. Hey, Bill. Thank Alan you. Brown. For this case, we brought in our veteran detective, Alan Brown. He's one of the most skilled interviewers or interrogators that I've ever worked with. Garland, Alan, and Tracy had a lot of violence in the home. But he's got priors for assault, aggravated assault, long history of violence with women. Garland Allen's criminal history shows a lifetime of domestic violence. Tracy was a victim just like many others. Garland was jailed for domestic abuse and battery, and the state then put the children in protective custody. Once Tracy divorced Garland and found suitable housing, she regained custody of her children. They got divorced and they fought over the daughters quite a bit, but Tracy, her priority was, was those two girls. But as of May 2001, it was like somebody plucked her off the face of the earth. None of her friends heard from her. No family heard from her. According to Garland Allen, on the day that she went missing, Tracy arrived at the trailer with an unknown black male that she was dating. She told Garland that she was leaving and he was now responsible for the children and she just drove off. We have to prove, did she run away or was she murdered? So Tracy is kind of what we can call suspect zero because if she did run off, then there is no murder. She wasn't necessarily happy with the way things were going in her life at that time. Her mom puts in a statement that in the past she has left. She lived in a homeless shelter before. History of homeless. Right. Per Garland, she left town with a black man. She was last seen by Garland with him. Statements from Tracy's friends confirmed that she really was dating a black male. If we can find this man, we may find out where she went that night. We got the tips that were called in, seeing her at the gas station holding a black baby, going up the car. This case went cold for a reason. First, there's no physical evidence that Tracy was murdered. We don't even have a body. And with the history of moving around a lot, there's the possibility that she really did skip town to get away from Garland with her new boyfriend. That might even be the reason why nobody for a few months even bothered to file a missing person report. Garland's mother comes in and reports Tracy as missing early 2002. With Tracy gone, Garland's mother got custody of the two children. She eventually did file a missing persons report so that she could get financial assistance from the state. In that report, Betty talked about instances of a Rainey reporting violence that Garland had committed on Tracy. The detectives do an interview with Rainey. Is that conversation recorded? Yes, it is. So you can play that for us? We haven't found him yet. We're still looking. With cold cases, you have a lot of different people working on a lot of different things over the years, and having it all together in one nice, pretty pile just doesn't happen. Well, the thing about Rainey is that she's going to get 
picked apart on a witness stand. Finding this lost interview tape of Rainey could really give us some new insight, but along with that comes all the inconsistencies that always happen when you deal with child cases. Tracy's other daughter, Stormy, was only seven when this happened, and she's told police that she has no idea what happened the night of her mom's disappearance. Now, if Tracy was murdered, then Garland's probably really our only suspect, right? He was the last seen with Tracy. He picked her up at home. Garland said Tracy told him she was running away and ran off with some unknown boyfriend that night. But Tracy's landlord later reported that the home showed no signs of anyone packing anything up. All of her belongings were still in the drawers. He said it looked like they were ready to have dinner and just got up and left. If Garland did murder Tracy, it's going to be hard to prove without a body. Circumstantial cases can be beautiful when they add up. Not having a body means that we first have to prove that a murder was even committed at all. This has been a case that uh, I would steal time where I could here and there because I can tell you we have not forgotten her. Bill and his team are not the only ones still searching for the truth about what happened to Tracy. Tracy's mother, Wanda Lowe, never approved of her relationship with Garland. Hi, Wanda. Hi. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? She feared for the safety of Tracy and for her grandchildren, and they kind of lost touch right before Tracy disappeared. She was my only daughter, and, and uh, I would just love to hold her again and tell her. I haven't cried in a long time. I think it's probably okay. Mm -hmm. It's good for the soul, I know that. It just really upsets me. I mean, I'm not the sharpest tack in the drawer, but I'm not stupid either, and I know that there's some things with this case that are not right. Like what? What do you think? Um, nobody ever called me to tell me that she had disappeared, that she was missing. That, you know, nobody ever said... Have you seen her? Have you heard from her? Do you know where she's at? What do you want us to do with these kids? We didn't stay in constant contact with each other. We might go six months and not even speak. I just thought, you know, maybe she's busy with her job. She was busy with the girl. She was trying to raise her children. It was just that way with us. When Tracy disappeared, custody of the two girls was given to Garland's mother, and Wanda's had very little contact with the girls since all that happened. When I talked to Tracy's ex-mother-in-law, I asked her who gave her my granddaughters, and she told me that Tracy signed them over to her. But I'm going to tell you, Tracy told me on the phone one day, Mama, if anything ever happens to me, do not let that woman raise my kids. Okay. You know, it's things like that that make me believe that someone out there knows exactly what happened to my daughter, and apparently nobody wants to talk. We are in Altus, Oklahoma, investigating the 2001 disappearance and possible murder of 27-year-old Tracy Allen. We have no body, we have no crime scene, so we're going to start this process by talking to all the people who knew Tracy best. Tracy lives right next door to me. Okay. That's how I met Tracy. Carol Leonard was Tracy's neighbor at the time of her disappearance, but more importantly, her daughter was the person who was babysitting the girls the night that all this happened. She said she left with Garland. They were going to go somewhere and talk, and she asked me to keep the girls, that she would be back in just a few minutes. So Tracy left her girls with the babysitter while she went to talk with Garland. The problem here is Tracy never came back, so Carol took the girls to her house. About 3 o'clock in the morning, somebody knocked on my door. I opened the door, and it was Garland standing there, and he said, I kind of get the girls. And I said, where in the hell is Tracy? And he said, we went out in the country to have a talk, and we got stuck. And she's covered in mud, and she's on taking a bath. Did Garland have mud on him? And no mud on him at all. He was not dirty at all. Okay. So the next morning, we went over there, and we knocked on the door, and nobody answered. No sign of Tracy. We looked in the bathroom for muddy, dirty clothes. Mm -hmm. There was nothing. There was nothing there to show that she even had been there, took a shower or a bath. Now we know that Garland left with Tracy that night, and the story that he told Carol Leonard sure seems to be a lie. You gotta understand, Tracy called me and asked me two or three times to loan her some money to leave him because he was gonna kill her. Londell Warren was a good friend of both Tracy and Garland, so he might have some new insight to help us figure out what happened that night. What did Garland have to say about her relationship with a black male? Knowing Garland that he's very racist, and that would push him over the edge, that would be enough for him to 
So, so you don't have any information personally from Garland or anybody else that that uh, that Tracy was having sex with a black male? Well, I know that she was. I was told it was damn Greg Hunt. Greg Hunt? Yeah. Oh my God! Maybe we have found the mysterious man in Tracy's life. After we did some research, we found out that Greg Hunt also went by the name of Greg Gibson. He passed away in 2011, but he had been in and out of prison, so Bill is trying to find out exactly where he was the time Tracy disappeared. This guy's either going to be the last person Tracy's seen alive with, or he is the motivation for Bo killing Tracy. All right, so we'll have to put him on top of our list to go try to find the brother. Well, we've got some big news. Mr. Greg Gibson was incarcerated the whole time. So, turns out when Tracy went missing, Greg was in jail for possession of a controlled substance. <sighs> Garland could have been so angered by the fact that Tracy was dating Greg that it could have caused him to commit murder. So Garland could have thought that using Greg as his cover story might have worked, but he had no idea that Greg was sitting in jail the whole time with his own perfect alibi. Wish we could take care of all of them that easily. <laughs> We need to know more about Garland's actions right around the time of Tracy's disappearance. We've tracked down a confidential informant who knew Garland's landlord. After Tracy went missing, Garland just skipped town. And this confidential informant is the one who helped clean up the mess in the trailer that Garland left behind. We drove up there, we went into the trailer. This is the next day. Yeah, I go around and I see the, the floor cut out and I see, the hell? Right in the middle of the floor. The carpet is The carpet, yeah, just a big old in my experience, when I hear a carpet is missing, the first thing I think of is maybe it's blood, something you might not be able to get out. But I have seen it all in my career. So who knows? It could have been anything. You know, it said she got out of hand. I'll explain later. Sorry about the carpet. Please don't tell nobody else here. This is me. Oh, oh. Okay, now that's good. That's good. Based on the information that our confidential informant gave us, I want to examine Garland's trailer as possibly being where the murder occurred. You know, it's just so sad you listen to Hal Tracy. He was beaten and thrown around for all those years. You know, you could judge him and go, how could you put up with that? But then you've never lived in a town like this with no yeah. job and no money and no education and little kids to raise. Right. It happened in my own house with my stepdad. Really? Yeah. I asked my mom, why are you going to let him beat you up again? Oh, it's okay. It'll be okay. I don't make enough money. Leave his sorry ass. Yeah. You think about all that, then you appreciate Tracy getting her first new house. Yep. And she was so excited just to be off exactly. on her own. Yep. And Garden just couldn't could stand, stand the fact that she was getting independent. What he couldn't stand is that he could no longer be in control of her. This definitely looks like a probably yeah, be similar. Yeah, this is the, the trailer similar to the one that they were in. There's a huge possibility the last place Tracy was was in Garland's trailer. But the entire trailer park is gone. So now we're going to go look at a mock trailer set up like Garland's trailer was. I think we'll be able to get a good idea of what transpired in the trailer. Yeah, this probably looks very similar to what it would have been. Your entrance door comes into your living room area with your kitchen off right there. And then you've got your hallway right over this way. If she was killed there, just to be able to get a visual of the layout is going to help us be able to piece this together. You can see from the photo, clearly the carpets do not match. After listening to the confidential informant about the missing piece of carpet, it's really clear that a large piece of carpet is laying over where it was cut. They're nowhere similar. You know, right. it's not like it was a professional job. No, they didn't try to cut it in. No, they didn't try they to cut it in. Over. It was laid over the linoleum so that if somebody came looking for it, there wouldn't be any blood, there yeah. wouldn't be any anything. And nobody's going to ask any questions because it was so messed up anyway. Right. The photos that we have actually do corroborate the missing carpet in the trailer, and that's another good piece of circumstantial evidence in this case. But we need someone who can tell us what Garland really did the last night that Tracy was ever seen, and that person's going to be his mother. You ready? Yeah. The team just picked up Betty Whitus, the mother of our main suspect, Garland Allen. Garland has a history of violence against women, and he's even broken her nose. 
it's not just difficult, but pretty much impossible to get a mother to talk about her child, even when they are violent. But we're going to hope that Alan Brown can have a little luck with that. Betty, we appreciate you coming in. Really what I do is just start with back when Garland brought the kids to you that morning. Um, well, early that morning, he came in and he said, here, Mama, I can't raise these kids. Tracy said she didn't want them. Okay. What do you remember about Garland's demeanor when he came over? He was just heartbroken. He acted like a man's been slapped in the face and said, here's your kids and I'm done. Come on, Betty. Okay. You remember Garland leaving your house that morning for 45 minutes and came back and it was all muddy? Wash his clothes? Mm-mm. When Tracy was first declared missing, Betty said Garland showed up at her house, covered in mud, immediately washed his clothes, and threw his boots away. He was hiding something then, and I can guarantee you Betty's hiding something now. You told the police back when they initially interviewed you that Garland Paul had a look on his face that you had never seen in your life and you know he had done something bad. What do you think happened to Tracy? I don't know. You know that Tracy didn't walk away from those girls. No, I did not know it. That poor old girl Tracy is still missing to this day. She's dead, okay? Do you know that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Know that I know that for a fact. Yes, ma'am. That poor old girl Tracy is still missing to this day. She's dead, okay? Do you know that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I know that for a fact. Yes, ma'am. I sure do. Oh, is she crying? Alan's fantastic. He's got Betty in there, and he's sort of bluffing her that maybe we found the body, and he's hoping that he can get her to crack and say something new. Where's your remains? I know that she is dead. And I'm going to tell you something, Betty. You know good and well that Garland beat that girl on a regular basis. You don't think she'd walk away from those kids, do you? No. There you go. Thank you, finally. Rain came to me and said, Nanny, are we ever going to find my mama? I said, I don't know, baby. What do you think happened to her? I don't know. I knew I know. I wouldn't be sitting there bald by myself. Right. And you think Garland did something to her? Yeah. There you go. I don't want him to do it, but maybe he did do it. You ever asked Garland directly, did you kill? I'm scared of Garland. You're scared of Garland. Where would Garland put her body? Kill I don't know. So you actually went out and looked for Tracy's body? I'm sure did. So you believed she was dead? You knew she was dead? I didn't know she was Well, you know what I mean, in your heart. That's huge, if she went looking for the body. And where'd you go look? I walked out where we always used to fish in the Tracy just loved that place. I've got a saying in life, and I told him one day, Gotta get you for this girl. She never said that before. Yeah. Thanks to Betty telling the truth about her own son, a strong circumstantial case just keeps working against Garland. We're trying to strategize on the best plan about how to approach Garland, and Bill comes in and says he has something big he needs to tell us. I have looked and looked and looked for those interviews with Rainey. We found them yesterday. Wow. Several months after Betty's missing person report was filed, the investigators conducted an interview of Rainey. Rainey was three years old when her mom disappeared, and she was five when this interview took place. How old are you? Five years old? All right. I'm going to draw just a little bit. You all live at your house. Papa and... Who else lives there? Mm -hmm. That's everybody that lives at your house? Uh -huh. Where does Mama live? Uh, I got to on the carpet with her put a blanket on her face and roll her up in a rug and tied her with a rug and then um, put her in the ditch. Put her in a ditch? Oh my God. Who did that? My daddy. Oh. Did you see it? Yeah. Sleeping at something, and we um wake up and see mom and dad and father, 
And Mama said, call the policeman and rest them. This is the beautiful part of cold cases, the hope that there's all this information out there that just needs to be mined for. Can a defense lawyer pick it apart? Yeah. But anybody that hears that tape is going to know that Rainey saw something. It is time that we confront Garland Allen face to face. He is living in Hill County, Texas, in a town called Hillsboro. Garland's trailer was recently burglarized, so the Hill County Sheriff's Department has come up with this idea to have him come down and identify some of his stolen property. Hello. Is this Garland Allen? Yes. Hey, this is Sergeant McClanahan at Hill County Sheriff's Office. Yes. Listen, I think I may have your pocket knife. Can you come up to the office and look at that thing for me? Okay, I gotta pick up my daughter. She gets out of school and she's at Marvel's. This is an amazing opportunity. If he brings Rainey, then we can question her too. Give me about, I guess, an hour or so. Well, I'll be here. Thank you. You bet. It's been a long time since anyone's asked Garland any questions about Tracy. He has no idea what he's about to walk into. Garland, I'm Rusty Williams. I'm out this detective. This is Alan Brown. He's an investigator. Sorry, sir. This is good to meet you. We're continuing the investigation of Tracy Allen, and uh, we thought maybe you could help us fill in some empty gaps that we had and just take just a little bit of your time. We have our main suspect, Garland Allen, and his daughter, Rainey, separated for questioning. We have caught Garland completely off guard, so the hope is that he's too surprised to be able to remember all of the lies he's told over the years. On the night she came up missing, where were you on that evening? I was at home. How did you come to end up with the kids? I went to go get them. She told me to go get the kids. She was leaving. My boyfriend was honking the horn out there in the car or whoever was with her. Okay. You know him? Uh, never seen him in my life. Never seen him before. No. What he what he look like? Uh, he was a black guy. And then what'd you do? I went and got my kids. Okay. Tracy was living at the time in that house over on Elm. Is that correct? I don't know where she she was living at the, at the time. How did you know to go to Carol's house? Well, Tracy told me to go get them. And you, okay. Did you already know where Carol lived? Well, yes, sir. And so you knew Tracy lived just right down the street. Yes, sir. Okay. Carol said. You come at 2 in the morning. What would you tell Carol about the kids? Why you were picking them up? I didn't tell her nothing. Carol said, Garland told me they got stuck in the mud. And that Tracy got out and got all muddy and was over home taking a shower. Your story don't match, man. I told everything that I... But you lied to us. After you brought them kids to your mother and dropped them off, your own mother says you left for 45 minutes, maybe to an hour. And when you came back, it's covered in mud. And she said, you took your clothes off and took them to the wash, and you told her, I had a flat. And these people aren't lying, Garland. They're answering, you know what? I'm not lying either. You got to be, Garland. No, I'm not. I'm not lying to you. Garland, she was with you that night. Yeah, I'm not lying to you. She wasn't with me. She was with somebody else. You know? I ain't done nothing to Tracy. I didn't, it you know, got out I of didn't hand. kill nobody. While Alan and Rusty are talking to Garland, Bill and I are going to talk to Rainey in the presence of Garland's ex-wife and Rainey's friend, Brandy. We want to get Rainey's side of the events surrounding the disappearance of her mother. You know, we want to talk to you, Rainey, because there's a whole lot to all this that maybe you've never been told and don't understand. I haven't been told a lot, and I don't appreciate it, because last time that I heard, we pronounced my mom dead. Right. Whether she's physically dead or not, she's dead to me. Does it matter to you if someone killed your mom? Honestly? Not really. She never came in my life. She was there for two years. And we would love for you to hear the tape that broke our heart. It's a tape that you gave when you were five years old about what happened when you were three in your little me. girl voice. She doesn't have to. She can hear it. What happened to the carpet in the trailer? Silence. What happened to the big section of carpet cut out? You cut a big square out of it. Well, I'd start, I started taking it out. So you, you, you take out the carpet by cutting the center out instead of pulling it up at the edges? Well, it was, it was... You only cut one piece. Why did you cut it out and leave the other? Why did you cut just that section out? Because the next morning, I was supposed to be at work. I was in the process of changing it out. I was working on the house. 
Garland had his story straight 11 years ago, had an answer for everything. But now that time has passed and we're catching him off guard, he can't remember what he said before. Well, I'm telling you right now, man, you will do yourself good if you tell the truth about Tracy. I had done nothing, no. Hit her head. Pin I'm, something on me that ain't right. Colin, I don't have to pin it on you. Your story yeah. about that day <laughs> is a lie. Tracy's dead, and you did it. No, I didn't. Can I be yeah. dismissed? Rainey Allen has been lied to her entire life, and because of those lies, she's been possibly living with a killer. It's crucial for Rainey to listen to this tape of the interview she gave when she was five years old. When she hears in her own words what she told back then, she might understand how important it is for her to get away from Garland. Well, your name for me. R A I N A Y. All right. That's you. I'm going to draw just a little bit. Who all lives at your house? Who else lives there? That's everybody that lives at your house? Uh -huh. Where does Mama live? Uh, Mama got on the carpet with her put a uh, on her face and roll up in a rug and I got on the rug and um, and put on the couch. Put her in a ditch? Who did that? My daddy. Do you see why we keep going? You've been lied to for a long time. I know that your whole life you've not heard about your mom, but when she was taken out of this world, DHS signed over custody to her on the condition she would divorce your father. You've been told about her just walking away and, and leaving? That's not the truth. And she picked you and your sister over him, and then she was murdered. Your daddy murdered your mother, baby. And every time we've talked to him, Rainy, he tells a different story. Because when you tell the truth, you always remember the truth. And your daddy can't keep up with what happened that night because he's never told the truth. And all we want to be able to do is to tell you, starting at the age of 15, you can build your life with the truth around you, not based on a whole bunch of lies that come crashing down on you one day. What questions do you have, Randy? What are you thinking? Right now, I don't know whether to go back with my dad, go with Randy. I don't know what to do. Do you feel safe with your dad? Do you I feel safe? Say it, but no. Okay. Because no. I guarantee he's gonna. He's gonna ask you a million questions. Yes. I'll just ask if she can spend the night, spend the weekend. Yeah. Are you with him at all? No. Completely broken up. We're divorced. Okay. Yeah. Done. In the meantime, we need to put together a probable cause for Garland Allen. Even without finding a body and trying as hard as you have, look at the beautiful case you built. Right. We have a fantastic circumstantial evidence case against Garland Allen for the murder of his ex-wife, Tracy. First of all, Garland was known to beat Tracy and he even went to prison for that kind of violence. Then we discover that he lied about Tracy and his whereabouts after he says he picked up his kids that night. We looked in the bathroom for muddy, dirty clothes. There was nothing. His own mother says he acted suspiciously around that time, and now she admits that even she believes he was involved. And I told him one day, gotta get you for this, girl. And after looking at photos of the trailer, we see that a large piece of carpet was missing, and Garland's explanation for that carpet is still changing. I was in the process of changing it But it out. wasn't taken up from the edges. You just cut the center out. Tragically, his five-year-old daughter gave us an even more sinister explanation of what happened that night in the trailer. But through all of this, the one common factor is that Garland has always lied. And I think everybody else connected to them is now seeing the puzzle pieces being put together and it's making sense. Yeah. Who knows? So, out of hand. Started on the carpet. Please don't tell the money else here. I, I think we're there. The chips are falling. The chips they, are falling. They definitely are. Thanks to the hard work of Bill Perkins and his team, after 12 long years, it's finally time for Bill to present this case with a strong circumstantial evidence and probable cause to the DA. Well, go take it to the DA and let us know what he says. All right, you ready? Good luck. Thanks. My name is Bill Perkins. I'm a detective in Altus, Oklahoma. I have a murder warrant on Garland Paul Allen. Showing up for the last couple of days. 
after presenting the case to the DA, an arrest warrant has been issued against Garland Allen for second degree murder. Now Bill and Allen are going to go out and hunt him down. See that orange and white truck? Maybe we're going to go up and knock on the door? Yeah. It seems obvious that Garland knows we're trying to track him down. And my worry is that he has firearms that we know of and he could be dangerous. <laughs> Yeah, he's definitely padlocked everything up. Looks like he's even left his animals behind. It's pretty clear that Garland's on the run now. Which one is he? The first? Right here. If anybody's going to know where he is, it's going to be his daughter, Rainy. Hey, Brandon. Have you seen Garland? Where's he at? I mean, just, just be honest with yeah, you. I have seen him, and I don't know where he's at. I'm going to show you something. It's a felony warrant for second degree murder. Right, for killing your mother. I think everybody knew that this day was coming, but I don't want to see him getting hurt by trying to fight the police and stuff, because I'm telling you, you can't run from this. Yeah. This is nationwide. The most important thing is he turned himself in. He's a violent person. And, and Rainey, I realize he's your father, and no matter what he's done, you still love him, right? Mm -hmm. But he's made some bad choices, okay? Uh, and there's always repercussions for that. Do you think you could get him on the phone? Yeah. Does that have a speaker phone? Call him and tell him they have a felony warrant for second degree murder for you. Okay. Does he work today? Or do you know? They have a felony arrest warrant for your arrest. Don't run. It's just gonna make it worse. Just don't run. I know. I know. Just don't run. <laughs> I can't even imagine how shell-shocked Stormy and Rainey are. And if I know anything about the children of abusers, they have a hard time believing that any parent can be a bad guy, because you have to remember, it's the only parent they're ever going to have. Rainey, ask you if you'll talk with me. <laughs> Will you talk with the detective? Yeah, here. Yeah. Darling? This is Bill Perkins. We talked before. <laughs> Darling, I've got the warrant now. It's been signed. You're going to be arrested one way or the other. I, I would rather do it the safe way. The best thing to do. Darling, I just follow the evidence where it takes me. Darling, if you'll tell me where you're at, I'll come to you. Okay? We'll get you taken care of. You'll come to me. If you can turn yourself in, that's huge. That is absolutely huge. If you keep to your agreement, I will bring Rainy down and I will let you visit with her, okay? Okay, so how long do I need to wait on you? Hey, this is Bill. I just want to let you know he was a no-show at the Hill County Sheriff's Office. Do they have a plate number for that truck? And that's black toy Yeah. Okay. And he may be telling a flatbed truck was a property on He's somewhere in the area. All right. I appreciate you nearly getting out of your hair. Thank you all. Police have received information that Garland Allen can be found in Wise County, Texas. He's cut his hair to change his appearance, and he's trying to cover his tracks by escaping in a canoe down the Brazos River. Once located, Garland fled on foot and then was chased through the woods before he was apprehended by the U.S. Marshals. You tell me what happened the best you can remember and try to get as detailed as you can. In the days following his arrest, he was turned over into the custody of the Altus, Oklahoma Police Department. That night I got home from work. Tracy come over. We started talking about kids and her leaving with some other man. That didn't go over too well. We went to argue. Uh, I just told her to leave and, and she got in my face. And 
I pushed her out the door. I didn't know she was going to fall down the stairs and hit her head on everything down there. I had all my horseshoe and equipment down there. Mm-hmm. I run down the stairs and I picked her up. I didn't know she was hurting as bad as she was. So I carried her back in the house and tried to stop the bleeding and she wouldn't stop. Mm-hmm. Was she saying anything after she fell? she make any sounds? Crying. The picture that Garland is presenting is typical. He's minimizing, trying to make it less than it is to get charges either not filed at all or filed as a lesser included. But I think with his history of physical abuse, a jury's going to see right through that and nobody's going to believe it. But at least we finally got Garland admitting responsibility in the involvement of Tracy's death. I wrapped her up in my blanket. We went to the lake. The statement that Rainey made when she was five years old might not ever see the light of a courtroom, but it helped us solve this case, and she was right. Why did you not? Try to drive her to the hospital or something. Was there something? I was afraid I was going to go back to jail. Okay. Killers think they're so tough until they're busted and caught. And Garland's tears ain't for nobody but himself. Garland kept this horrible secret for 12 long years. And now with the help of the Texas Rangers and Bill Perkins, we're headed out to try and find her body. Hey, Garland, do you remember anything about any cinder block I put on top? Nope. Well, I'll just say that I couldn't, I can't tell if they were good. I'm scared to death if I wasn't there. It's hard for just a second, and then it just pushes right through. This is the only soft spot that they're hitting, so... Well, you see, yeah, um, I have a foot that appears to be a rib. You see it? And there's some white piece, maybe jewelry or something with it. This whole area has got to be opened up. Everything fits his story. Yep. There's no reason to believe this is a dead dog or anything like that. It's going to take some time for the lab result to be done to establish that this is Tracy definitively. But Garland, by his own admission, is her killer. Hi, Wanda. How are you? I'm doing okay. Yeah. You're waiting? Oh, yeah. The hardest part of our job now is telling Wanda, yeah. but the hope is that at least she'll get some answers to the question she's had for so long. I just need to know what happened to her. You know? um, with all the work that Bill Perkins has done all these years and with the uh, extra work this last week or so, Garland has finally confessed to killing Tracy. <sighs> He's told us where he buried her body. Oh, it's been a long time coming. It has. You know, mothers have instincts. And I just knew, my soul, that it was him. I want to bring her home and lay her next to her grandparents. Thank you isn't enough. We hope that this will help you finally be able to put your daughter to rest. Garland let Tracy's mother wander and live in pain for 12 years. And then he told everyone that she left her babies behind. Now it is time for the justice system to go to work. And Garland can sit in prison for the rest of his life and appreciate all the consequences of what all he's done.